mouse, a dinosaur, or a human being. We all exist but for one purpose. Everything exists to glorify God, to serve God. If not for Him, it would not exist. And therefore, we exist to glorify that person from whom everything came. I told my daughter once, she, she, we were talking about causes and cause and effect and how, you know, uh, government does this and then the people do that and then this happens and then that happens and somebody does this and that causes something else to happen and then somebody does that and that causes this to happen and so on and so forth on down the line. And I said, yes. I told my daughter Shanti, I said, yes. It happens cause and effect and cause and effect and cause and effect and cause and effect. And she said, so what happens when you get to the first cause? I said, well, then you have the cause of all causes. Okay, so who caused the cause of all causes? Nobody. What? How is that possible? How can he be the cause of all causes, but he has no cause? It blew her mind. And that's the beauty of God. He's a mind blower. He's uh, beyond our material conception, concept. And on the one hand, it is very difficult Sages and saintly people try for lifetimes upon lifetimes to reach God, to understand Him, to relate to Him in some way. But, and it's very, very difficult because God does not relate easily to someone just because they want to relate to Him. What does God relate to? Love and devotion. This is not to say, as so many people now are saying, oh, it is love. You must love. Everybody must love. Love, 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 love. Love is the, love is the answer. Love is everything. No. I grew up in the 60s, and that's exactly what the hippies said, and it's bullshit. Sorry to say. It isn't love that is going to conquer everything. It is love of God. The supreme lovable object, the object of one's love, should not be the pieces. If you have a, a giant, a, a, a beautiful giant puzzle, you don't want to fall in love with one of the pieces. That won't give you the whole picture. If you put the puzzle together, and ah, then it all seems to work out. So, we are not saying that you must visit a Vaishnava temple or that you should not go to the mosque or you should not go to the church or you should not go to uh, the, the Jewish temple or anything else. This is not sectarian. This is eternal. This is the eternal one religion. And we practice it in this way. We serve God in this way. We glorify God in this way. We are not saying you must chant Hare Krishna or you must uh, worship the, uh, the deities of God. Many Muslims would not understand our worship at all. It would seem like blasphemy because here is, is God and he looks kind of like us. But doesn't the Bible say we are made in the image of God? Yes. Lord Chaitanya appeared in this world 500 years ago looking like that simply out of his mercy to show what God is really like. And 5,000 years before that, Krishna appeared. Hmm. 
simply to show who God is and what his, what his uh, attributes are. And from that, from his teachings and from the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, who Im, Im, uh, expanded upon and through the grace of what we call the parampara, from guru, from God to guru to disciple to guru to disciple, our disciplic succession goes back actually uh, more than 5,000 years, unbroken. Unlike the papacy, which was originally a Christian parampara, uh, we have not had gurus in the line of disciplic succession who have gone off the deep end and committed uh, unholy acts. Each guru has to be pure, a pure representative of God not uh, someone who is subject to the senses. They must be beyond the senses. They must be devoted. Without devotion, uh, you, you cannot really understand God. You cannot really love God. You cannot really uh, appreciate God. This, this practice that we do, that you have been a part of this evening, is called bhakti, bhakti yoga. It is a type of yoga. Hatha yoga is the kind of yoga where you get into all kinds of positions and turn yourself into a pretzel and do the, the lying down and the standing up and the standing on one leg and all of that sort of thing. There's nothing wrong with that. that that purify, helps to purify the body, limbers the body, so that you can perform service and devotion. But Lord Chaitanya, God himself, Lord Chaitanya taught that without devotion, there can be no understanding of God. Without love, there is no philosophy cannot just be dry philosophy. Oh, this is this and this is that and this is the way this is and this is truth and this is not truth. It can't simply be dry philosophy. It must be imbued, imbued with love, devotion, bhakti. So, this is what we are doing. And once again, I emphasize that it is not something that cannot also be applied to Christianity or Islam, chanting the names, glorifying the names of God is doable within the philosophy of every major religion in the world. And uh, we invite everyone to do it in the best way that they know how. God has unlimited names. Some of them are Allah, El Shaddai, Jehovah, Krishna, Rama, Damodar, and so forth. So many names. And in that name, any of those names, he is named in accordance with his qualities, his pastimes. You know, sometimes those of us in the West tend to think of God as some great old man with a beard because he is the oldest or some big cop in the sky who's watching to make sure that the minute we commit some kind of a sinful act we'll be thrust into hell. But God is much more than that. He's the supreme lovable person. Yes, he's a person. He has likes and dislikes, just like any other person. 
but he is absolute. He is beautiful, all attractive, and uh, he can be all fierceness. Very scary. But a devotee even loves that aspect of God. God may appear to him in some horrible form. And he will, he will, you know, be surprised, upset, and say, please, please show me your, your beautiful form. I don't want to see this form. But uh, he is all attractive. This is, the, this is what the name Krishna means. Krishna means all attractive. We, we are attracted to the smell of good food. We are attracted to the smell of baking bread. We are attracted to the smell of a flower, the beauty of a flower, the, the magnificence of a tree, the, uh, the, the beauty of a, of a, of a good-looking man or a good-looking woman. All these things attract us, but this is actually God within these things that are attracting us, not the, the thing itself. You eat the food, it's gone. You're back to being hungry again. Yes, God is within everything, but he is also outside of everything. And he is unattainable by material means, by education or by simple meditation or something so by just reading philosophy but he is attainable through love. He controls everything, and yet he is controlled by our love. This is the nature of God, Krishna. Another aspect is that we don't understand who we are. Not only do we not understand who God is, we don't even know who we are. I think I am a man. I am an old man. Or I am a woman. I am an ugly woman. I am a very pretty woman. Uh, the cat is thinking I'm a cat. The dog is thinking I'm a dog. The tree is thinking I'm a tree. But we are not any of these things. I am not this old man and uh, this old man body. When I was three months old, I still had me in there. It was still me. When I was 10 years old, I still identified with me. Now that I'm 70 years old, my body is 70 years old, but I'm still me. I am not the body. When the body dies, when the body dies, it's simply a transformation. Life is never ending. You are eternal. You have never been born. You will never die. You simply go on. And there's no guarantee that you go on into a human body in your next life. You may not. Depending on your activities in this life, you are building your next body, as it were. So we are not the body. We are the eternal spiritual being within the body. And each of us has an eternal spiritual relationship with God. This is the essence of bhakti philosophy. Uh, Vaishnava, called Vaishnava philosophy. So, with that basic foundation, uh, maybe, hopefully, you have a, a better idea of what, of what you're experiencing here. Uh, does anyone have any question about anything I've spoken about?
Feel free. No? Everybody's, every, you understand everything perfectly. I answered your questions already. Well, that's good. Oh, I'm, I'm ahead. Huh? Good, good. That kind of satisfaction is what we all seek. Okay, so thank you very much. Yes? To understand God? Is it possible to understand God? When is possible? You don't know who he is. Well, how do you understand anything if you don't know who or what it is? Even those, I mean, even great saintly persons who have an intimate relationship with God, still God surprises them. I mean, he is the greatest mystery and yet the greatest lover of all, you know? I mean, we can have a good friend, and then all of a sudden our good friend will go off and do something that's like, whoa! Similarly, we can have a similar relationship with God. I mean, we can have a relationship with God that is as real as your wife, your brother, your father, your mother, your friend. It is as real as that. It's not like, oh, it's pie in the sky and, and yeah, I have a relationship with God and he's in my heart and I know he's there. Bleh, sort of. No. In this body, uh, even in this body, I have met saintly people who have as real a relationship with God as you have with your brother, your sister, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife. It is internal. It's not something that you can see, you know. It's not like Oh, hi, this is God. You see him? You don't see him? Well, I see him. No. It's internal. It's within the heart. Within the heart. And once we know our heart, we find that God is already dwelling there. And he is the greatest mystery, but he is the most loving person. And he is always, in terms of understanding him, this... The minute we think we do, we'll probably find we won't. We don't. You know? He's wonderful in that way. So. Any other question? How can we help a person who is dying? The interesting thing about the name of God is that it is not material. We say Krishna, we say Rama, we say Jehovah, we say El Shaddai, we say Jehovah. The name of God comes directly from the spiritual sky. The name of God is not material. And so, when a person is dying, they are at a crossroads. They are sort of within the body and sort of leaving the body at the same time. And where they're going, they don't know. And this scares the hell out of most of us. And so, when... When I know someone is dying, anyone that has died in my family, what I try to do is I try to tell Boying and 
all of our friends to gather around the bedside and chant the names of God. Because these names are spiritual, they are like a rope. They're like a lifeline that the soul can grab onto as he leaves the body and go straight back to Krishna. Become reawakened or re reacquainted with the reality of his own spirituality and the reality of his relationship with God. And so, uh, when my mother was dying, she didn't want a bunch of people standing around chanting over her bed. So, I, I put my spiritual master, Jagat Guru, chanting on an uh, endless loop on my uh, iPod. And so, she died peacefully. Even though she had a very difficult life, a very rough life, uh, a life full of confusion and so much difficulty, nevertheless, when the time came, she died peacefully. I don't know if she went right straight back to God. She was a heavy drinker, heavy smoker. <laughs> she didn't do everything right by any means, but I know she was very peaceful when she passed. So this is what you can do. Uh, if you have a relative who's dying, give him God. Give him the name of God. The name of God and God himself are non-different. God is his name. He is his name. In the material world, something is not its name. You have a chair. You say chair. It's not a chair. There's a chair over there, but you say chair is a different thing. With God, it's non-different. You say God's name. You say Krishna. You have God on your lips. It's non-different. And so he has power over death. And he can bring your loved ones, you, anyone to him at that time. Does that answer your question? Anything else? No? You want to do the eight prayers? Okay. All right, all. Namaste.